It was not written in the stars that this young boy would one day start his own business and become a great inventor of his time. He was born with a natural curiosity and a very strong will. Always struggling to do things better. Always wanting to do more for his company, for his employees and for society. Paul Dewey Jensen was one of a kind. Paul Dewey Jensen was born on the 19th of May 1912. He lived together with his brother and his parents at the local poorhouse in Sale, just outside Beringbro. His father, Niels Jensen, was the manager of this public-run facility house for the poor and needy, a circumstance that had a long-lasting impact on the young boy, Paul. He was very well aware and very early aware of, of uh, social problems poor people's problems and I'm sure that this really influenced his way of thinking and understanding the new world he, he came into. His life was also filled with joy and happiness. He was helping on the farm with the cattle and working in the fields. But then the family was struck by tragedy. Unfortunately Paul lost his mother very early in his life, only six years old, his uh, mother fell away. In fact, he, he, uh, there were a uh, brother in his home as well, but this uh, uh, older brother, in fact, were, were uh, killed by an accident in the kitchen, which was, of course, also a, a, a tragedy for, for the whole family. Paul was now living alone with his father and he therefore often went on his own. His father was busy taking care of the poorhouse and Paul had time to explore the world. It was just after World War I and a lot of new inventions were developed and also came all the way to sale. Paul saw a bus for the first time and down at the grocery he had a chance to touch it and smell the hot engine. Paul didn't go to school every day. In summer, two days, and in winter, four days. Altogether, he went there for seven years, and especially math had his interest. I think he was a smart boy in many ways, and. Uh, I'm sure that he picked up uh, 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 the basic things and uh, that helped him to carry on with his young life after he left the school. Uh, so uh, in his uh, little older childhood, when he came up towards the teenage uh, age, of course he were also together with his father Nils uh, talking about what shall Paul do when he grows up. His father had left the poor house and had bought a small farm outside of Bjerringbro. He was hoping his son would take over the place, but Paul had other plans. Paul wanted to be a carpenter and, and uh, my, my grandfather took him to Bjerringbo, which were the larger town in the neighborhood, and there were no, no place, there were no uh, job for him to get there as a uh, carpenter. So uh, my grandfather said, well, what can we then do? And then he went to a, uh, a, a little machine shop in Bjerringbo called Svensson's Machine, machine Factory. And there was a job for the young Paul, so he actually became an apprentice in, a, in, in this small machine shop. Only 14 years old, he left his father and the farm and moved to the city where he lived at a boarding home. A whole new world opened for Paul. And again by coincidence, uh, the working place by Swenson's were right up to the back garden 
of the uh, uh, um, owner of a sawmill in, uh, in Beringbo called Martin Buck. Martin Buck had three daughters. And one of these daughters were um, Inger, <coughs> sorry, Inger, my mother, and Inger, this young girl, were, were running over the courtyard of, of, of the machine factory on her way up to, to school. He was very creative, Paul, and, and already in his uh, apprentice time by Swenson's, he was developing new tools and, and uh, various uh, new machine parts that were helping uh, uh, Swenson's machine factory quite a lot. So he became really a, a very well appreciated uh, young person in the machine factory. And he, be, he came to love the, black, uh, the blacksmith's job. He came to love the steel, came to love the smell of oil, and, and, um, and uh, he became a very, very good uh, toolmaker, in fact, during these young years. Paul lived in various places in Bieringbro, but always carrying his wooden box. This wooden box were in fact filled with chemicals. So Paul, he uh, experimented with these chemicals and he, I'm sure he made a, a, a gunpowder and he made other chemicals were, that were probably also explosive. So uh, at a certain point when uh, apparently something happened, the family where he lived and had had his room were saying, you can't stay here anymore because of your experiments. So he had to move, <laughs> move again. But uh, I remember later when I was born and in my first young years in our home that he still had that wooden box with chemicals with him. Then again, Paul was struck by tragedy. Only 17 years old, he lost his father and became an orphan. Paul continued to work hard at Svensson's machine factory and he graduated in 1932. In the next 12 months, he was laid off from time to time. He felt he was missing knowledge. He was eager to learn more. He learned quickly and he, his brain were, were in a way, uh, you know, uh, created so that he understood mathematics and, and technical things very, very well. In fact, later <clears throat> in his life, uh, it became obvious that Paul, in fact, Paul Lud Jensen were a, a, a technical genius uh, in many, many aspects. He studied mechanical engineering for a year, but he had to quit because he ran out of money. Disappointed, he went back to Beringbro and got his old job back. It was in the middle of the 30s and unemployment was very high. Not being able to finish his studies annoyed him for a long time. And that may have been one of the reasons why he later, in the 60s, offered his workers evening classes in various subjects. Here, the students are practicing German. After becoming a foreman, he married Inga Johanne Bach in 1938, and they moved into this rented villa in Oostergele, 41. Little did he know that this house should play a vital role in the developing of Grundfos. Right here where I am standing, we are in the first workshop of uh, Grundfos, uh, where my father started in his basement in 1944, with two employees. A very small place, but uh, that is the important beginning. My father had his fine and good job as a very valued uh, uh, foreman at Swenson's machine factory. He was uh, 
However, in some or another way, more and more became more and more impatient. Something were coming to Paul uh, more and more. That's my clear feeling. He wanted, he wanted, in spite of his good job, to um, uh, start his own career um, as an independent. He wanted really to start his own blacksmith shop. So uh, I think that was uh, then in some way the beginning of uh, what we call Grundfos. But it was not called Grundfos uh, in, in the very first years when he started. It was called Bjergbro uh, Pressestøberi. <coughs> and machine factory. And uh, of course this name comes from the fact that Paul Dude Jensen did not have in his mind to uh, make a living out of producing and, and developing pumps. That was something that came to Paul later. In the beginning he was on his own but soon he started to employ people, working in the basement, making heat installations, plumbing and typical blacksmith work. In 1944, he erected this metal workshop of 200 square meters. Paul Dewey Jensen had great plans for the future, but was still looking for the right product. A uh, farmer in the neighborhood were actually asking him to um, <clears throat> if he could install uh, a motorized uh, uh, water pump for his farm. Paul, he uh, looked at this opportunity and this job possibility and he realized that he could not buy a pump. And he could not buy a pump because it was during the end of the Second World War and there were no pumps available for him to buy. And then Paul, of course, could have turned back to the farmer and said, I'm sorry, I, I, I cannot help you with a motorized pumping system <clears throat> because I can't buy a pump. And had he, and he, had he did, did so, I think there would never have been a company called Grundfos. But what he did was instead of accepting that he couldn't buy a pump, he said, if I cannot buy a pump, why don't I make a pump? So he started to actually design his first pump, still not knowing that pumps should be his future life and future business. The first FOSS was delivered in 1946 and was, from the beginning, a success. And it also got nicknamed the pig because it resembled the animal. The next series were improved in many ways and got the new name, Grundfoss. In 1947, Paul Dewey Jensen introduced the Dupfoss the first deep well pump that could go below seven meters. In the following years, he focused more and more on producing pumps, and in 1949, the first pump was sold to Norway. Paul Dewey Jensen was constantly expanding into new areas and into new markets. And a growing business needs more space. He had now bought Oostergerle at 41, and every year he was expanding the factory. So Grundfos expanded, so step by step, uh, over the first 10, 15 years, right out from his private home. 
I think that was the way, the way he really liked it because he was able to, on the one hand, be so close to his home and on the other hand, be right next to his business. So he, he spent, of course, time here uh, in the home uh, with, the, us, with kids but all, and dining and, and sleeping, but most of the hours where, where he was awake, he went to the business. The Danish market um, were sufficient for, for Paul Lud Jensen the first 10 to 15 years. His key customers were farmers, uh, waterworks, and um, various uh, smaller industries. But uh, in the late 50s, Paul Lud Jensen, then of course as many other young companies started to look for export opportunities and he had also uh, of course contacts um, from, uh, from abroad. Uh, he also participated in, in, uh, in foreign exhibitions. He went to Norway, Sweden and Germany and met people from all over the world, creating many new long-lasting relationships with customers. I think uh, right from the beginning, Paul Lud Jensen was ambitious. He wanted to, to grow his company. Uh, there were some important uh, um, things that, that he practiced uh, for achieving that. He, first of all, were very close to his customers, and he built a very loyal customer base. That is uh, very valuable. But he built that uh, customer base by designing uh, high quality products. He wanted his products to work uh, uh, day and night, and they did work. Uh, he has designed products that, that, so to say, never seem to fail after 30, 40 years. Uh, but uh, it was close to him all the time that quality should be exceptional. We shall remember that Paul, he, right from the beginning, built his own tools, built his own machinery for, for his pumps. He thought that he should not only design pumps, but he should also, as a uh, fundamental thing, design machines and tools for producing his pumps. In this way, he, uh, he could shortcut a lot of work time, you know, and, and make it much more efficient. One fantastic example, of course, is when Paul Lud Jensen, in his late age, designed the so-called Grundfos carousels. <laughs> I, I think um, that invention he did there has been of an enormous value to one for us. And here in 2012, I think there are still some of his carousels working day and night. How many engineers and designers <coughs> can tell such a story? I think it's only a very few. Ustergele 41 was also the home of the family Dewey Jensen, and living close to the factory meant that everybody was part of the business. The family was now counting four children also, Bearder, Niels, Estriel and Inga Maria. This very uh, dining table here was of course, the, of course the place where we were all sitting nearly every day. And uh, my two sisters here my older sister there, and I was sitting there, and my father at the end, and my mother here, where I'm sitting. 
but often the family was not dining alone. They had uh, many guests coming. They had customers coming to his home. My mother were willingly serving uh, uh, lunch and, and dinners, and, and they had often uh, uh, customer uh, guests and also key employees staying at their home during night time. So uh, this also meant a lot for us, uh, for us young children, because we listened uh, during our whole childhood to many business talks. After the supper and after having maybe helped uh, us children with some schoolwork, which he sometimes did, he went back to work. <clears throat> And many times I went with him uh, as the young boy and, and sat beside him and he was making drawings, you know, on, on the, these drawing boards where his uh, engineers were sitting uh, every day and, and drawing. And, uh, and he then made a small sketch and then put it on the drawing board and the next morning when, when the engineer um, a technician came in, he could look at that and, and they said, so, yes, I understand what he means. And very often there were a very good idea or, or a, uh, a real problem solution. And the employees, they could uh, really judge uh, his uh, spirit and, uh, and um, humor uh, um, by looking at his hat. If the hat was so pulled down here, right next, uh, close to the eyes, then, then you, they, should, they should take care of him. <laughs> and they, they should uh, not get too close to him. And that was particularly in the morning time. When the hat was so more up here, uh, then they knew he was in, in a good mood and and, and, and full of joy, and, and uh, then it was good to talk with him. But no matter what mood he was in, he was always working, working on new projects and working on building up his business. I think in deep in Paul, uh, there were a wish to make things better. And he were, were he was a technical genius and, and he had many ideas as to how things could be done better, technical things. And um, of course uh, he had to finish his designs and so he could make a production. But I'm sure in the back of his mind he was always thinking about things to improve in, his, in, his, in the technical design. I think we can uh, really say that Paul were relentlessly ambitious in, in his way of, of making and, and uh, 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 developing his, his whole uh, uh, business. So um, he was all the time in a very close and direct contact with, with his uh, key customers. I think that is a very important uh, uh, fact, in, in fact, uh, and a big part of or maybe his success. Uh, he was close to the customer and he got their feedback as to what they felt could be done better. He never let customers down. Had he uh, uh, made something that didn't work 100% uh, uh, satisfactory, then he changed it for them. When Paul Dewey Jensen started his own business, he first employed some of his colleagues from Svensson's machine factory. Many of them stayed for many years. In 1952, he already had 40 people working in the fast-growing business. They moved over to him and wanted to be part of, of, of his team and his success. My father and mother were in fact very close to, to many of, of our workers. Uh, they were 
They were uh, participating in family uh, occasions, you know, confirmation of, of, of workers' uh, children, marriages, and, and so they were actually very close related and, uh, uh, to our, 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 to the first employees. And, and of course that created a great loyalty. And uh, you cannot imagine anything more important that um, <clears throat> having loyal employees and loyal workers around you. That is so important and that makes a whole difference. Loyalty creates engagement, creates, uh, uh, you know, also uh, employees wish to do something which they were not told to do, you know, take extra steps. And uh, it gives a motivation and uh, in fact, Paul and Inger, they developed a, their company as a family. I shall also tell you that uh, Paul had more or less only employees that loved to work for Grundfos. The ones that didn't like Paul because there were also employees that didn't like Paul's temper and, and his way of, of acting. They didn't stay long in Grundfos. Paul were, were a, uh, in many ways a tough, a tough guy. He were a very tough guy. Uh, but he was also a tough guy with an exceptionally soft heart. Paul took care of his workers, and he was among the first business owners to employ disabled people in the production. That happened in 1968, and today that has spread to all Grundfost companies. In 1960, Paul Dewey Jensen combined all his products under the name Grundfos, and he had started production in Germany, in Veldstedt, a decision that should be the beginning of the globalization of Grundfos. He built an organization there because he wanted to produce in Germany. And he knew in his heart and in his stomach that he could not uh, make, make a major success in Germany without producing locally. And he then also started, uh, together with production, a sales uh, organization. He wanted, at a certain point, to uh, start his own sales organizations around, uh, uh, as he had done it in, in Denmark. And um, this, this whole philosophy starting own sales organizations, growing own sales organizations, using local labor and local management has been our principle uh, uh, from right from Paul Dude Jensen's uh, early, early times and we are still hanging on to, to uh, that principle. After Germany, he opened companies in the UK, France, Austria, Holland and other countries building a very strong base in expanding to Western Europe. As the company was growing, the number of visitors and guests increased rapidly. Soon the house in Oostergaard 41 was not big enough to entertain them all, and he started using Madsen's Hotel in the city. But he wanted a place of his own. That was uh, the time when he started, around in the mid of the 1960s, to think about maybe it would be good for him and for Gonfos to acquire a guest house. Uh, guests, a guest house for a Danish company were a very unusual uh, thing, but uh, he looked around and just by coincidence, very near to his uh, hometown cell, he found Frisholt. That uh, house he bought in 1965 and then started a major, major renovation of, of this old house. And in a year or one and a half year, it was brought up to a, a very fine standard. Over the years, thousands of guests have stayed at Frisholt, and many have arrived in the company plane. In the beginning, it was a propeller, but soon, Paul Dewey Jensen bought a company jet. 
And the morning they landed in Billund, uh, with the Lierdi, it was a fantastic day for my father and, of course, for all of us. And now my father had even better, uh, of course, possibilities to invite customers from all over Europe in his new Lierdjet. And uh, so he did, so it, it meant thousands of customers coming to, to Gunfors. Seeing the factory, having good talks and enjoying Friesholz, a good entertainment and food and accommodation there. I think uh, whenever uh, I have asked customers, what is it you remember from your visits to Grundfos? Uh, they normally would tell, tell me and others, you have some beautiful and very clean factories, and then you have a wonderful guest house for his son. In order to grow, Paul Dewey Jensen needed more space. In 1963, he revealed his plans for the 35 acres of land he had bought just north of the city. He was going to expand intensively in Grundfos in the coming years and also in the city. Developing Bieringbro and making it an attractive city for both the citizens and the employees was very high on his agenda. During this period, he erected a lot of new homes for new employees besides building his new factory. And he, um, in fact, uh, were elected uh, for two times four years to serve on, on the local uh, city board in, in Bieringbro. And that were, was in, were in the days where it was more simple, so to say, to, to be a, a, a city board member than it is today. And there were only a small uh, administration around uh, managing the community. But I think he, uh, he did some good things there. I think it became clear that he did not have enough patience. He was too unpatient to really uh, uh, stay in, in local politics. And I think he also created some unfriendships, uh, unfriendships uh, during that period, but of course uh, he wanted the best for his, his little city. Eventually, Paul lost his patience with both local and national politicians and he decided to move to Germany in 1971. He spent several years there, making the German factory a fast-growing success but still taking care of the factory in Bieringbro that had just celebrated the first 25 years in business the year before. Grundfos was now exporting eight out of 10 pumps. The turnover had exceeded 100 million kroner, double up compared to the year before. And Paul was eager to try out new markets. So far, he had only few experiences with the North American continent, but now was the time. About 1975, my father said, now I'm ready for going to USA and starting Grundfos in USA. And he went right to, to Clovis and he established uh, himself there already, I think in 1973, purchasing a rather important 32 acres of land in Clovis. And in 1975, he decided personally to move to Clovis and start to build, build himself a normal life there. Started to, to uh, develop his a sales company and started a small production base in USA. So uh, <clears throat> that was, uh, I think, his final ambition in life to really put Grundfos on, on the uh, map of, of, of USA.
But Paul Dewey Jensen never got to harvest the fruits of his American adventure. Unfortunately, Paul passed away in 1977, but he managed to see that we had built our first factory there in 1976. And he had been there for the inauguration and he could see that there were a young manager team and a, a group of employees and he saw also the first Gunfors carousel being moved into the factory and saw it start uh, UP circulator pump houses and he was there right with his, his, his you know his hands to to make sure together with the local people that this carousel were set up and working. A few years before Paul Dewey Jensen passed away, he started thinking about the future. What should become of Grunfoss when he was no longer around? To continue the strong growth and secure the free and independent future for the company and all the employees, he first established a Swiss-based holding company and then, later on, in 1975, he established the major owner of the whole group, the Paul Dewey Jensen Foundation. I think he did that because, because he apparently had seen too many family conflicts potentially uh, that could develop or had developed. And that is not to say that that he, he thought that were going to happen with his own family, but so to say he didn't want to take that risk. And me as the only son of, of, of Paul, I can say I think that was a fantastic and a, a very, very uh, uh, important decision uh, and one of his last major, major decisions. The Paul Dewey Jensen Foundation is a self-governing institution and it owns about 85% of the shares in Grundfos Holding. The family members own about 12% and the rest belongs to the employees. The main purpose of the foundation is to continue the development of Grundfos and to reinvest the profits in the Grundfos companies. When uh, Paul Dewey Jensen passed away in 1977, he handed over to us a very important legacy. First of all, some very sound business principles. For instance, that we should never in Grundfos uh, spend more money on fixed investments than we uh, were earning ourselves. He also handed over to us a high degree of social responsibility towards uh, employees and towards uh, the local uh, society. This is uh, a principle that has followed uh, Grundfos ever since. And finally, he, uh, he handed over to us uh, a number of family values that were high degree of trust uh, among employees, respect for each other, tolerance for each other, and also uh, giving a high degree of support to each other when, when we needed it. So real family values that uh, are meant to hold a whole family and let me say, hold a company uh, together. The legacy after Paul Dewey Jensen is evident still today. It is part of the way we act the way we do business and the way we work together. It is in our DNA. In all aspects, he laid the foundation for Grundfos. Though he had a hard start in life, he was able, against many odds, to create his own business. He started in 1945. One man, one idea, one vision. Today, Grundfos has grown to cover the world. Mm -hmm.